You're listening to the Flip Houses Like a Girl podcast, where we educate, empower, and celebrate everyday women who are facing their fears, juggling family and business, embracing their awesomeness, and wholeheartedly chasing their dream of flipping houses. Each episode delivers honest-to-goodness tools, tips, and strategies you can implement today to get closer to your first or next successful house flip. Here's your spiky-haired, breakfast taco-loving host, house-flipping coach, Debbie DeBeery. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks so much for hanging out with me. You know, I love to share these stories of everyday women who are out there doing the thing, out there flipping their first house, facing their fears, right? They're terrified. And they're still going and doing it. That's what lights me up. That's what inspires me. And those are the kinds of stories that I'm going to continue to share. Unlike most other real estate investing podcasts that are all about the host or the same guests that just keep shuffling around to all the real estate investing podcasts, right? Let's just keep on going against the grain, just as I always have, and sharing stories of women inside our coaching program who are having amazing success, feeling terrified and doing the scary things anyway. Today, we're going to listen to Rebecca Smith's story of her first flip, and it's awesome because they ended up flipping out of state right? So they live in California. They're flipping houses in Oregon. Yes, it's possible. And she and her husband also have small children. And Rebecca has a whole other business she's running. And her husband is a full-time employee somewhere. They're doing this successfully. You can do this successfully too. But you got to face your fears and you've got to jump. All right, let's dig into Rebecca's story of her first flip. And she's going to tell us all about her other projects that are going on now, too. They're totally making things happen. All right. You're going to love this conversation. Here we go. You want to just introduce yourself and like who you are, what you're up to in the world, where you are and that sort of thing. I am Rebecca Smith and my husband and I live in Northern California. We have two little girls. He works full time. I own a business other than house flipping. And the two of us have always been really interested in renovating and making, you know, tacky spaces, pretty, (laughs) uh, making crappy spaces solid. (laughs) Um, and, and so we've just gotten really excited about real estate investing over the last year. So when you, you guys had fixed up houses you lived in, right? Like I remember yes. seeing pictures of a house that you like were living in that you showed some things that were done to it, right? Like, yeah. So kind we of bought our house. Our first house was, we had not even seen the inside because California's real estate market, even in 2014 was insane. So uh-huh. we wrote an offer site on scene, walked in, it had less bedrooms than it said, reeked of cigarette smoke. It was oh. disgusting and dirty. And I cried happy tears because we finally got a house. Oh my gosh. And wow. we polished that thing into the most adorable little house you've ever seen and loved the whole process. Yeah. Meanwhile, people were like, Oh, if you don't do these repairs before you have kids, they'll never get done. And we're like, watch me. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So we, and we did it all like really inexpensively. That was my, I was like, how do we make this look really cute for, you know, $25 on Amazon. So we painted cabinets and put on hardware. We kept the floors. We kept the like laminate counters. They looked fine. We, it was like, we smoke and mirrors it. And yeah. then did the stuff that needed to be fixed. And we were like, oh my gosh, what a cute house. Right. So then we're like, okay, this is something we're into. We love fixing up houses. Yep. Then we moved into another fixer upper that was like a nineties cardboard box that was basically melting off its frame. Oh, God. And again, we're like, this is what we can afford. It's perfect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've like, we, you know, rolled the equity into that one and then started working on that. And basically we were like, Hey, we're like kind of good at this. So what if we, but we were like, but we can't afford anything in California. So this is impossible. That was sort of the roadblock that we had hit. Yeah. Until before we met you. Okay. Okay. So then 
you decide, all right, let's do this program and walk me through because you ended up investing in a different state. Yes. Yep. Yes. So we, um, I, I mean, we're pretty like, as far as mindset, I am a like, let's make it happen. It's totally possible. It's fine. Don't worry about it kind of person. Uh-huh. And, and he's like impulsive enough that he's like, okay, I trust you. <laughs> I love that. That's and so we kind. just, yeah. we start shopping, right? So, and like literally the first, I think within a week of signing up for the program, we found two houses in Marin County that were, you know, million dollar houses that were like, oh my gosh, the numbers work on MLS. We found these two houses wow. and then we're like, we got to find the money. We got to find the money. We like spend a week kind of freaking out. And then we had this thing where we're like, you know what? We don't, I don't know if we can find the private money. We don't really know what we're doing yet. I don't even think we could get our offer accepted. We totally backpedaled okay. and we didn't pull the trigger. Okay. In hindsight, both of those properties would have worked. Both of them would have made us a, like a stupid amount of money. I watch, I watch the terrible flip that somebody did on one of them. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Right. So, so <laughs> that happened first. And then we're like, okay, now we can't find anything in California. Like, oh, what the heck? So I started looking around. I've always been a little bit of a Zillow nut. Like what, what do I do for fun? After the kids go to bed, I scroll Zillow. Like <laughs> it's the new 30 something thing apparently, <laughs> but I found this house in Oregon where I used to live. That was this adorable little 1930s house for 225. I'm like, we had just been running numbers on 700, 800, a million. I'm all 225. Right. Easy. So like, uh, was like, done. We'll like, <laughs> sure. This, I know we can figure out. Yeah. Give me three. <laughs> exactly. And so I called an old friend. I actually had called her months before when I first saw this house and was like, what's the deal with this house? And she's like, first time buyers are trying to get in. No, she had a total mindset issue. Then it, it, I was like, okay, fine. Not the time. It went back on the market and it was like cash only. So I called her again. I was like, just write the offer, just write an offer. And she did. And we got it accepted. And so we're like, okay, we're six hours away and we're buying this house. Cool. We better find a contractor. We better, like, <laughs> better figure it out. Exactly. But yeah. all I knew was that my spreadsheet said this one works and we have an offer accepted. So like, let's do this. Yep. And, and the one, I mean, one of the million things that are so great about your program and your group is that, you know, Austin, my husband is a worrier. <laughs> He's like, well, how are we going to do? I'm like, well, just ask Debbie. It's fine. We'll figure it out. We'll just ask Debbie. Ask Debbie. <laughs> She'll tell us what to do. And he's like, yeah. oh, okay. 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 <laughs> And that's been the case. It's like each time I'm like, do we write that it's cash? Do we write this? Do we, what about that? Should we negotiate this? What about that? And like, you guys are like, yes, no. Okay. We could try this. What do the numbers say? And it's like, you just, you don't have to know what you're doing. We've got like this army of experts in our corner who don't want us to fail, which is just so reassuring. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad it helped Austin. And there's always like, that's the perfect balance, right? The one who's like, we'll figure it out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then the other one that's like, yeah, okay. And, but then what about this? Like we should probably consider this. (laughs) Yes. And then our running joke was it's fine. If it goes awry, we'll just have to move into it. Right. Exactly. We just got to move to Oregon if it doesn't work out. Right. If that's the worst thing that happens, it's not a terrible thing. (laughs) It's a cute house. It's okay. We'll survive. Cost of living's lower. It's fine. Exactly. Did you have, do you still have family there? Is that what made you look there or okay? My dad lives there and I sold real estate for four years there in the early aughts. So I knew the neighborhoods really well. And I knew this was a solid neighborhood. Awesome. And I just like, so that's the neighborhood. I'm like, this is the one I want yes. adorable old houses that need some love, but there's some really nice quality homes sprinkled in with some, like, it's just a really nice place yes. for, for a young family to live, which is basically who we find ourselves making houses for basically. Yep. Totally. For, totally. For ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you jumped, <laughs> you got that house and when did you guys end up closing on that, on this, on so that purchase? We did a three week close through hard money okay. and we had, we had 50,000 left over from our previous house sale. So we used that as our portion down, Got it. which made it really easy. We used the pictures of before and afters from our previous houses. And we're like, we're experienced. Yeah. 
<laughs> kind of. And they're like, sure, good enough. And right. so they gave us the loan, closed it in three weeks. It was a mad hustle. Austin had set a goal that he wanted to buy a house by the end of the year. We literally closed on it on New Year's Eve. That's amazing. Are you 4 p.m. Oh. Yes. New Year's <laughs> Eve at 4 p.m. We closed the loan. We closed it in three weeks at the holidays. So my hard money lender was like, could do no wrong by wow. the time we were done with this. That's amazing. And yeah. And then we were like, okay, we've, we've got, we found two contractors. We got referrals for two contractors. We got two bids. One, our, my spreadsheet was like, this needs to cost a hundred thousand. We got two bids. One came in at 265,000. <laughs> How is that possible? I know you can build an entire right. new house for that. Yeah. Right. And then the other one came in at a hundred thousand. We're like, you're hired. Yeah. Um, okay. So you found two contract contractors, hired the guy that came in at a hundred versus yep. 260. Um, yes. and how did that go? Like, how was your experience doing that first flip? You're six hours away. You're trusting a team that you're building there, you know, in, in yeah. another area. How did it go? How was that process? So this contractor is like an angel. I mean, he is, he's literally a pastor at a church. He's the most tr trustworthy, honest guy I've ever met in my life. Wow. The fact that we somehow ended up with this guy is like, I'm just, I'm so grateful. He is also, he's got an eye and a passion for design. So basically he and I went and like nerded out at the carpet store <laughs> and I, and he's the kind of guy who I know a lot of contractors will be like, whatever, tell me what you want. It's fine. Okay. He was like, I, you know what? I think this is good. And I was like, tell me about the people around here. Tell me what the, you know, what are people doing here? Cause I know California, but you know, Oregon. Right. So we really collaborated. And I think he really enjoyed the, that whole creative process Yes. that I, I brought him in and, and was like asking his wife, like, okay, what do you think about this hardware? And yeah. so we really had this cool symbiosis of like, we're all working together. We want to make this beautiful vision that you're going to want on your website, that we're going to want on our website. And it's going to, and someone's going to fall head over heels for this house. And he was all about quality, but was able to do things, you know, our original budget for our original needs was met. It was the extras <laughs> that, uh, that drove it over. Oh, so those extras, <laughs> extras. So when we bought the house, we knew that there was an oil tank in the ground. Oh, interesting. And it's, yeah, it's like an Oregon thing. Older homes have submerged diesel tanks in the ground that they ran their heat off of. We knew it was there. It was in the disclosure. We tried to get 10,000 off our price. Once we found out, once we read the disclosures, they gave us five okay. and we're like, okay, hopefully this will only cost 10. And it ended up costing 20. Oh my gosh. Cause they, they have to remove this giant tank. Like I, I can't, I don't even know the dimensions. It was just it, the whole front yard basically was dug up oh, to pull this God. giant tank out of the ground. Then they had to bring in this like rock drilling rig from Eugene, like this and dig down to take soil samples and they had to keep going. And then the ground was dirty. So they had to clean it out and fill it. And then we had to do a new driveway. So it was about $25,000 oh. after the driveway. And then we were already going to do sod, but like, it wasn't like, we had to then do sod because there was a hole in the yard. 25 grand. Um, but now we have a $20,000 uh, spiral binder that says we're all good. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that came up. Oh, jeez. Um, then one really cool thing about having done this last year was that the market was going up like crazy. Right. So as we were doing our project, our original ARV, so we bought it for 225. Original ARV was 425. We're okay. going to put a hundred thousand in. We're going to make 40 grand. Yep. Then um, the market starts just going up. I'm like, Ooh, this is great. Right. Then I guess I've sort of made the mistake of, well, shoot, if this is a higher end home, we have to do higher end things. Oh God. Um, like we weren't going to put a garage door on, but I'm like, well, we have to do a garage door. We weren't going to landscape the backyard. I was like, well, we have to landscape the backyard. We weren't going to build a deck. We built a deck. We, I started to be like, if this is a $500,000 home, it needs to be a $500,000 home. It needs to be like I'm, I have high standards for what I would want. And so we ended up after all was said and done after their inspection report and a couple of things needing to be fixed, an electrician, not doing good work with, mm -hmm. he didn't remove the knob and tube in the walls. He just sort of like 
patched around it. Oh and gosh. They, <laughs> even though it was specifically in our contract that it needed to be removed. And oh, um, so we ended up paying an extra, you know, 5,000 for that and another 5,000 for HVAC because they didn't, there were no ducts to the second floor and the HVAC people didn't ever tell us that. And the inspector was like, there's no heater air on the second floor. And we're like, what? How is that a thing? <laughs> why, how, why do we pay $10,000 for HVAC? And there's nothing on the second floor that like, don't you think someone would have been like, do you want to run some ducks up there? So, right. Basically our original budget of hundred ended up being 150, oh, man. which is a little ouchy. Um, oh, that is ouchy. <laughs> very oh, ouchy, gosh. but, um, the market went up by almost a hundred thousand dollars in a year. So we ended up still making 70 K on the property Golly. and giving a beautiful, perfect home for a young family. Right. Right. That we feel really good about Right. That's, that's the thing, right? Like you even though if those houses were selling at 500, like the same house that was selling at 425 started selling at 500, it's still the same house. Right. But I get that in your mind, no, $500,000 house is different than a 425. Especially in Southern Oregon. Like that's, that's expensive. It actually ended up going over asking and selling for 515, which just like shocked the pants off of me. Oh my gosh. But thank goodness because of those extra things. So that's, Right. You know, the big takeaway, I am ever the optimist. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. We don't need a buffer. It'll be great. <laughs> um, and it, and it did. So <laughs> that's awesome. So as I go into my next projects, I'm like, ah, oh, I really want to just be so optimistic, but I don't always have a market that's going up fast enough to catch me. Oh my gosh. You know? I know. I know. When my realtor said he wanted to list it at 500, I was like, oh, okay, sure. Wow. Wow. I was thinking 465, maybe 450, but I also come from California where it's like you price it for five dollars and people pay five million. They just, right. <laughs> like you price it low, you get a crazy feeding frenzy, and it goes for 150 thousand over asking. Oregon's not the same, so I had to really rely on the experts there. Yep. To say no, 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 you max it to the very top of what you think it can get. Got it. And then you'd be willing to reduce. Got it. And and if you get lucky, you get full price or a little over in the first week, which we did first day. Yeah. Were there comparables at 500 or were, was your house like really a $600,000 house priced at 500? It, there was nothing comparable. And Uh I knew this from the moment I started looking at Medford Zillow Uh was like, oh my gosh, everything has oak cabinets and white carpet. Uh The whole town has oak cabinets and white carpet. (laughs) So if we do anything nice, (laughs) that's like a little bit of design, people, people are either going to love it or hate it. So I was like, I'm bringing a little California, bring yeah. a little Joanna Gaines. I'm going to yeah. make it as like palatable and not crazy out there as possible so that it'll have broad appeal. Yes. And, and it did. And like, and, but of course the people who bought it are like this cute, like photographer husband and the, and a nurse and they have this little baby on the way. And, and like, I look at their Instagram, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so cool. Right. They're so cool. <laughs> so of course they're not the kind of people who would buy oh cabinets and white carpet. Totally. They didn't have, well, that market didn't have it. Like that's all the market had before you arrived. So it was, it was head and shoulders above anything else on the market. And I saw how, you know, I, our realtor knew that this couple had offered on a different house, which was one of those oak cabinet, white carpet, like bad nineties remodel in an older home. And then they went to ours and they jumped up a hundred thousand and what they were willing to spend because it was just, it's amazing how that happens. Yeah. You all of a sudden find money. Yeah. So it's hard as we're moving into our next projects. I'm like, oh, well, obviously our house is worth a hundred thousand more than any of the comps. <laughs> Which I'm like, whoa, 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 Rebecca, <laughs> just calm down. That's so hilarious. I, the- <laughs> hilarious. I remember thinking the very same thing when I first got started because no, like it, nobody was doing any design. Like in the yeah. late, like 2008, 2009, 2010, there wasn't design. It was no. what's on sale at Home Depot. Right. Yeah. What's the cheapest thing we can do? Yeah. Let's yep. put granite and on. oak. Yeah. Yep. And get out. Right. <laughs> yep. And I was like, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. And that's how that was yeah. my mindset. Like, well, I'm just going to add, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on top of what other people are getting because, yeah. uh, so I'm, I get that. Yeah. Well, and that's the hard thing is like, I'm not willing to do a crappy remodel. I'm not oh, willing yeah. to do like the house that I saw that million dollar house in San Rafael yeah. that I was like, oh, it's so ugly. It's yeah. just brown floors and white. Yep. And I'm like, where's the je ne sais quoi of this house? And I, you know, 
And I see those like Lowe's special vanities with the, like the bowl that comes out the front. Yep. And I'm like, I will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I have to like, this, this is something luckily, like we're, this is something we're doing to build wealth for our family. Yeah. But it's also something that we want to really enjoy and feel great about. Right. And so I'm like, yeah, okay. But I can make 25 grand by putting like a bunch of lows into a house and having it like, you know, like that's okay. And like, eh, the roof is probably going to go bad at some point. And like, eh, don't tell them about the electrical. Yeah. I'm not interested in that. I would rather wait for the right house. That's like the right price. So they can do the right job so that I can feel really great about the house that I'm providing for another person. Dude, I'm telling you. I can't imagine doing it any other way and losing sleep. Like, I don't know how people Mm. sleep at night when they're putting out something that's just like, meh, right? Like they're not doing it. Like they're not doing right by the buyer, by Mm -hmm. not just doing the design stuff, but fixing the things that like are hazards that yeah. should be taken care of. I don't know. I don't know how people I call that. that the boring stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. It is. It is <laughs> like this house on main street. It was six months of boring followed by one month of beautiful. <laughs> like, That's right. Oh, it was so and, boring. I was like, and, really? It still looks like this after this amount of time. And I think I remember you asking about, um, the finishing, like the, the, like the detail stuff, right? The, the yeah. ending stuff, right? Taking a while. The yeah. oh my gosh, I know it's, it's like it's oh, it was like months, weeks. Oh, it felt like it was forever. So, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. yeah, it's like just do it, just go, just finish the details, just put the handles on the thing so right. I can move on with my life. Let's like, go. come on. Oh, it's always yes. the finishing touches that take so long. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so purchase to sale. How long did you have the house? We seven months exactly. Okay. And during that time, I feel like I know you bought another property soon after you bought this one. Yes. And I feel like you worked on like you shifted and worked on that one for a while and then we came back. that's probably lost us a month. Okay. Um, so we found another house. Both of these we found on MLS. Okay. This other one looked just like our first house. Oh, it was gosh. like it was a little jewel that was just very tacky. Yep. <laughs> so we were planning on flipping it, but the profit margins weren't that great. It was going to be like a $25,000 profit on it. We had this like, okay, now you're not supposed to be sentimental about houses, but we're like, oh, this house is, this house is just so like, I can see the vision so easily Yes. that I know no one will see. Cause we've already done this exact house. We literally painted cabinets, white, put, put hardware on. It was a different house. Yes. So we went in and then you've got like the, the rental spreadsheet, which yep. I got to tell you, I'm a total numbers phobe and your spreadsheets are amazing and they're oh. not scary and I awesome. love them and they make everything make sense to me awesome. and non-number brain. I love to hear that from the non-number people. Yes. Cause <laughs> I know you're a numbers people. person, but yeah. you've transmitted enough of your knowledge that I can make good decisions basically where right. we, we go, okay, well, I know we like this little house and it's all it's tacky eighties splendor. And <laughs> we, when we ran the numbers as a rental and we called a local property manager and went, oh my gosh. If we just take a HELOC out of our house, put the money down, we're going to make 700 bucks a month on this house. And we got in at a great deal because again, it fell out of escrow. They had done a bunch of foundation repairs. So buyers were scared off. There were cracks everywhere uh-huh. because of it re yeah. resettling when they fixed the foundation windows were crooked, but we're like the foundation's done with a 75 year warranty. So we did new windows. We patched cracks. We just we took the cracks out, which were just buyer scarers away. Yep. Right. And then, <laughs> and then we rented it and it's an amazing solid little rental. That's also gone up a hundred thousand dollars in a year. So we're just sitting on it. That's we, awesome. We both were like, crap, can we get them to move out so we can sell this thing? But like, I don't know. <laughs> Hold it. Least, we, I, know. I know. Like calm down, Rebecca. This is why I can't do stocks. Both of us are like, sell it. Wait, don't sell it. Sell it. Don't sell it. <laughs> So we're like houses make much better sense for us <laughs> impulsive, excited people. I know. I know. I totally can relate a hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So you guys worked on that one. Mm-hmm. You're holding it, which is fantastic. I love yes. to hear that. And then you went back and started doing this one again. Okay. So you yes. focused back on so that, one. that pulled our, our team off the house for a little while. Cause we were like, we just want to get this one knocked out in a month or two. 
get a renter in, then we can go back to, cause we knew we wanted to sell in the summer anyway. And our original time frame had a selling in March. So we're like, we have some wiggle room. It's okay. Oh, gotcha. Perfect. So I had told originally that I wanted the contractor done April 15th okay. and he ended up done, you know, July 26th when we closed, but that's okay. Right because, on time. <laughs> yes. We originally had pl- planned six months. And so seven months, I feel like is not too bad. Okay. Um, great. Now, you talked already about the surprises along the way, which were like the electrician stuff and having to deal with the tank in the ground. Were there any other big surprises? You know, the only other thing was just that our wonderful contractor is not the fastest because he, he had, he was coming up against a labor shortage in okay. Southern Oregon. Okay. So he, it was basically him doing the whole project, him oh, and his, his one guy. Oh gosh. So that was the thing was that, you know, so I've got these expectations of like, well, do, 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 it's supposed to just be done. And like, why is it, why does, why does the house still look like this? Where's the kitchen? What's going on here? So part of it was, I don't really understand. I have very unreasonable expectations. Like I look at my husband, I'm like, can you just redo our railing, like weld something and make it look really nice. And he's like, ah, <sighs> Yes, but like, but do you know what that's actually going to take? So I was like, this should be done. And it maybe should, could have been if he had five guys, but he didn't. So that's the thing that we're, as we move into our next project, we've got a really conservative time frame because we're assuming it's going to be the same situation. He got may it. be able to hire another guy or two. He may not. So we're assuming that he won't basically. Yeah. So we actually have an eight month timeline on our next one, Okay, which will carry us into the spring for resale rather than having to sell in the holidays. Oh yeah. So, okay. So you have two under contract right now. One we already closed on a couple weeks ago. That's right. One you closed Mm -hmm. on one you're closing on today. Today. Yes. Or as long as the tenants get out, we will not record until the tenants are out. Yeah. Good. That. Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, how did you find these two deals? So the one, another one, the one we already closed on was MLS as well. That was another one that fell back out of escrow. So all three of ours had fallen out of escrow and me, thank thank you to my Zillow obsession, had found them immediately when they hit the market. Cause I have little alerts for all my little searches. Yes. And I, every single one of them, I call my realtor. I'm like, give me the scoop, go like, show me this house. Let's write an offer. Yeah. So I'm like (laughs) obsession put to good use. It is. It is. Found it. And, and your impulsiveness is important. (laughs) No, it is because we're not scared to jump on the deal. Yeah. Also we leave an out. So we've had actually two other escrows that we've pulled out of. That's right. Because it worked on the spreadsheet based on my certain estimation of repairs. Contractor went in repair estimate went up. They wouldn't come down on price. We bailed. Boom. And that's the beauty of it. And that's hard. It's hard. It it, it can be hard at first be like, oh, I'm a failure because I'm backing out. No, you win because you backed out. And it was hard because I was literally looking for more houses the entire time. Yeah. The entire time we bought a house in end of December house in February. I was looking constantly. Yeah. I was writing so many offers that were not getting accepted. Finally, I get into escrow. I'm so excited. And then we have to bail. Same thing happens again. And I'm just writing offers, writing offers, writing offers. I'm like, oh my gosh, this market is killing me. Yeah. And then we get two accepted on the same day. Cause now I'm like, I might as well just write them all at the same time. Cause none of these are going to get accepted. Right. This one that we just closed on in Ashland is cute. Well, tacky right now, but going to be cute. Mid century house. (laughs) And then this other one that we actually did a bunch of mailers. So we sent out a bunch of postcards. This guy called us tired landlord had been a landlord for 25 years. It's this adorable craftsman house that that's got a nineties remodel inside of it. right now. Oh God, I broke it. I know. So we're going to just, we're going to fix it. We're going to make it an adorable little farmhouse. And then we've got our mid century on the other, on the other town. And yeah, they, accepted the offer on the same day. <laughs> was that like, is so cool. Okay. We better find some private money. Cause we also had not sold main street yet. So we didn't have any cash. We put our heel lock into the one house. We put our cash into the other house. And now we're in escrow on two houses and we have zip in the bank, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to figure it out. Um, exactly. I'm yeah. like, if the numbers work, we will figure it out. Hey, that's what I say, right? If the numbers yep. work, you're going to think good deals. Always find yep. money. Always, always, yes. always. Exactly. So, okay. How did you find the private money? 
Um, so when we originally were looking in California, we called everyone we knew. <laughs> Everybody said no. Um, and then we were like, shoot, we can't do it. Basically, it was sort of our, our initial reaction. Uh-huh. Then um, people saw what we were doing. People saw us on Instagram. People saw our Facebook. I did a post on Facebook that was modeled after one of the ladies in the group who had done this really great post. And I was like, hey, guys, look, like, this is our new project. This is our COVID project. Um, and then at the end, it was like, P.S., if you want to invest, we're always looking for investors. And I had one woman reach out who I know, I know, but I don't know that well. Um, and she said, you know, my dad, I found out when he passed, had been doing these little loans. And so she was like, oh, I would love to do that sort of that's so in, cool. an homage to him. Oh, and wow. so she was like, let me know. And she was on the hook for both of those houses that we fell out of escrow on, but she's like, it's okay. It'll happen when it's right. She was really cool. And then we got into this house and she's like, yep, I'm in. And I just showed her the numbers and she was like, yes, I like what you guys are up to. And then the other one was my husband's coworker who he just was talking about. He's like, what are you doing over there? What are you up to with this house stuff? And Austin talked to him and he's like, I got 50,000 on that. Okay. See, you have to talk about it. People are so scared of, of talking about it. But if we don't tell people what we're doing, look, everyone wants to flip houses. They don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to be the one like on the hook for managing everything, but they want to be involved in it. It's yeah. the coolest thing, yes, right? It is cool. It is. Mm-hmm. And so letting people do that by telling people what you do is so important. So I love that. I love Mm -hmm. that. That's how you happened into it. Like, yeah, if people don't know what you're up to, there's no way they can support you and you're making them money. (laughs) This woman's making 1250 a month. You're making them money. That's like, you can't make that on a rental property with that kind of down payment. Like that's good money. It's risky, of course. So like, I get it. And right. And I'm like, we know, like, I, we know what we're doing, AKA we have Debbie in the background, helping us figure it out as we go. <laughs> but I, but I feel confident that we're going to, that we're doing a good job and we're doing, right. we're, you know, that we are taking care of these people's money. So the last, yeah. these two purchases have been with zero of our own money. Awesome. Which is very cool. Cause now I'm like, Oh my, as long as we can find the contractors, we can do as many of these as we want in as many areas as we want. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, exactly. And, and like having a team locally is, is, you know, we sort of dream about, Oh, wouldn't it be cool? But honestly, if it was local, I would never see my husband again. He'd be in there micromanaging and doing all the stuff. Right. And this is forcing us to not do the work, to allow, to scale a team essentially to be like, I show up for one weekend, we pick out fixtures and then I disappear. And then we come about once a month and just see how it's going. It's actually a business. It's a business. Right. It's not a hobby or a project or a second job. Exactly. It's a business. Which, That's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. It's huge. And I appreciate that. I appreciate people that are hands-on and, and want to do some of the stuff. It's awesome. I totally get that. And also Try to build something that doesn't require you constantly being there in order for things to get done or being there yes. at some point, you know, it's been really nice though, that we can go visit my dad once a month, <laughs> you know, it's like this perfect. And now they, they've actually moved, but they still have a house there so we can go hang at their house and it's, it's night. We love it there. So it's fine to go visit once a month, six hours away. You said six hours. Yeah. Okay. So are you those two that you're purchasing now, are you just using private money or are you using a combination of hard and hard and private, hard and private? Got it. Yeah. Yep. Hard for the purchase. And then money. yes, we got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the private money was the down payment and then the hard money is the, the first. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Okay. Very cool. Have you posted pictures of the mid-century and the craftsman in the group? I don't know if I've seen them. I think just like the listing pictures. And I just bought a bathtub last night, a, a clawfoot tub. Oh my gosh. For my craftsmen. Oh, I'm like, I love it. I love and it. And as, as like my two little girls are like pushing this 400 pound tub on a dolly, I'm like <laughs> taking pictures. Like, we got to put this in the group. But <laughs> this is the stuff that I love is like going on Craigslist and finding the cool old thing that's going to make it feel like it, it never had a 90s bathroom, you know? That was my next question. Like, what's your favorite part of this or one of your favorite parts? Because there might be a lot of favorite parts, but what, what are some of the things you love about this? <laughs> Something that blurted out of my mouth the other day is Austin and I are on a date 
and we're on a FaceTime with our, our realtor looking at a property. He's like, this is what you do on a date. I'm all money is my love language, Brian. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. That sounds horrible. But um, <laughs> I love that we're building wealth for our family. Yeah. I, but I also, I love the creativity. Mm -hmm. Um, the, it's like, I don't know, there's big hits along the way of like, I got one. It's like, you go fishing, you sit there and sit there and you finally get the fish. Yes. Like, I love that part about it. I love like when I fill out the spreadsheet and I'm like, it's close enough to the asking price. Oh my gosh, we can offer. Like, I love that part of it. I love the hunt really Yeah, trying to find the houses. That's really exciting to me. And then of course, you know, having all these Pinterest boards that I can finally put to use. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, I love like the way my mind works is I'll just scroll and be like, nope, 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 no. Nope. Yes. That's exactly what belongs in this house. And then like the contractor's like, yes, that's exactly. And then we, and like, and then they do it. <laughs> right. They do it. <laughs> they do that part. Uh-huh. And then I get to like, you know, fade out, fade in house is done. Yeah. Make a profit. What was your profit on the first one? Like 80? 70. 70. That's amazing. 70. 70 K. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, all right. What's Austin's favorite part? What does Austin enjoy? You know, he cannot sit still. That man cannot sit still. He has beautifully productive ADD. <laughs> so when he's, when his, when his like energy is aimed at something productive. He is so like, he's just so capable. Like I literally found a picture of a metal railing on Pinterest and was like, can you weld this? He's like, I think I can. And he figured out how to do it. And like, I think the sense of accomplishment when he is like in the line at the grocery store showing random women, his picture of his railing, he made that's his, like, he feels, I think so proud. He'd have to confirm this, but I think he's got to feel so proud of what he's creating. Yeah. And like, and his expertise, he's just a total perfectionist. So he's basically going in and doing quality control and he's making sure that it's a great house. He's the kind of guy who I'm like, I don't even care if the wires are safe. I want my house to be beautiful. And he's like, yeah, that's nice. (laughs) Right. Let's also, (laughs) he, I think gets a lot out of knowing that it is a very safe and solid house and a lot of accomplishment from being like, I did that. I yeah. made that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's huge. What's y'all's, what are y'all's goals with this business? Do you have, or do you have long-term goals with it or do you have any short-term goals with it? So, I mean, I just want to keep doing it. Yeah. I, it's like, I came to a realization in my personal business that I had had all these, like, oh, I want to be a million dollar CEO by the time, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I want to be with my kids. I want to raise my kids. If the world shuts down, I want to be able to be home with them and not be resentful about it because I can't work. Like I want to be able to have a business that supports me having a lot of balance in my life. And then I was like, and if I make more money, that's a bonus and that's wealth building. That's the nest egg. That's the college. That's, you know, like, that's the kind of thing that like like my parents were able to give us a down payment for our first house. I want to be able to do that for my kids. Yeah. And so I think it's a, it's a combo of the safety and security that comes from just knowing that there's like padding, that we've got this little income over here from this rental. And we've got this, you know, like we can go to Disneyland because we've got like this extra cash coming in and just so nice to be like, yes, kids. Yes, you can like, no, we're going to stay on, we're going to stay at Disneyland. Like those, you know, those, like you talk about the bagel or the latte, like the bagel and the latte, like when I get the bagel and the latte, get both. (laughs) So it's, it allows us to have that. Austin's goal I know is to, to spend more time with his kids and he has this really great job with great benefits. So it's really hard to want to walk away and be self-employed full time. Sure. Um, so that's, I think sort of like, uh, it's out there that if we could retire him early and get enough rentals with enough cash flow that it would cover that. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be amazing for him to be able to do this full time. He would love it and be incredible Mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's like the long, long longish medium ish term goal. Yeah. I love that. Are you, are you trying to hold a certain number of properties a year or are you just kind of going with what comes up? You know, so I, I had this big aha this year where I had this whole whiteboard. I have a whiteboard above me at my desk that has all these numbers and all these goals and all these, and 
I realized just after the pandemic hit and being home with my kids that I was like, you know what? I have everything I need. I have everything I need. And so what I'm going to keep doing is just do what is what I love, you know? And, and so I'm not, I would rather do fewer houses, do a great job, feel good about it, have fun, then do more, make smaller profit, go on volume like that. Yep. So we have like a certain number, like we don't want to have a rental that has less than 700 a month cash flow, like closer Perfect. to a thousand. Perfect. So that way there's a really decent buffer. It gets us some savings. I'd love to be picking up a rental a year. I, part of our process is like for every flip, we'll hold one. We'll basically take that profit and put it down on a rental that cash flows. And so if we're doing that, you know, once or twice a year would be amazing to then have, you know, 15 rentals in 10 years. Right. And then Austin can retire at 48. You know, that would be incredible. Wow. I love it. I totally see it for you too. And I, you know, I love the, um, I'm, w- I'm with you on that whole striving and you should want this. You should want this massive operation. You should <laughs> want all of these moving parts. You should. And that's great for some people. And it does work beautifully for some people. I'm more of a lean, like, let's mm-hmm. keep it, let's keep it as lean as possible. So like manageable, right. Manageable yeah. enough where I still have time freedom <laughs> and yes. I still like, cause I only get my son half the time. So when mm-hmm. he's around, it's like, I want to be a hundred percent in that 50% yeah. of the time, you know? Yeah. So I totally get that. And I can completely, I completely relate to it. And I appreciate that, that, um, like the way you see that. Cause I, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same, mm-hmm. but that's not the messaging that's out there. No. And so I actually had felt like this last year I was failing because I mm. wasn't reaching these crazy high oh, goals in wow. either my, either the business. But then I was like, wait a second, I am home with my kids and <sighs> money is coming in. Right. I am thriving. Right. This is amazing. So I had to really go like, okay, as soon as I can be an acceptance of like, what I have is already good enough. Yeah. Everything else is bonus and I'm doing it because I want to. There's no need to, there's no must, there's no need to prove things to anybody, which I got caught up in, in 03 in real estate. I ended up buying a bunch of properties, losing them all to foreclosure, oh, bankruptcy, divorce, like the whole thing in 07, 08. We have very similar words in our backgrounds. Oof. Like I, I learned some really valuable lessons. I'm like, no, we will use a spreadsheet and we're not going to just buy it because it's available and because it'll make me look good because now I own more properties. Right. That's not what I'm interested in. Yes. I love that so much. Yet yeah, those kinds of really hard times definitely give us a perspective mm-hmm. to not want to feel that again. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, I can. I, I relate to that too. I yep. didn't know you had that in your background. So yes. yeah, interesting. This has been a blast. I've loved like just connecting with you. I love hanging out with you, Debbie. <laughs> I know. I love to just connect with you and hang out. Um, this is so fun. And I've loved just that you've done it. Like not just that you've done it, but you've also like, I, you know, I suggest, Hey, just send out some letters and you sent out some letters. A lot of people don't just send out letters, right? It's yeah. like, and then they're like, well, why aren't I finding anything? Well, mm-hmm. you got to do stuff. Well, are you obsessively looking at Zillow and texting your realtor, everything that looks good and making him write a weird offer on it? Right. That's well, the, then w- <laughs> if you're not going to do that, you got to do something, right? Because if you're not yeah. going to go fishing for the, all the things that are right there, the MLS and the wholesale, if you're not going to fish there, you got to fish in another pond. You got to do it. Yeah. So I appreciate you for doing it. Yes. And I appreciate you for making this all possible. This has been a dream forever for, for decades. And just to be able to like successfully do it is really amazing. Feels it's great. huge. You've definitely successfully done it. Like you're doing it and I'm excited. I want to see pictures of the next two. Yes. So have you started rehabbing the third, this third property? Did you guys start? It's probably not like <laughs> based on contractors having a baby and like 10 minutes, basically he's got a bit, his first baby's coming. So he's ordered windows. He's getting the kitchen measured. He's doing, we were like, because of the COVID supply chain order Mm -hmm. everything right now, order it now. Yep. 
So that's what's happening is he's Good. ordering everything. Then he's taking two weeks to be with baby. And Good. then he's going to go full time until it's finished, probably around Christmas. Okay, and great. We'll stage it and see if it makes sense to throw it on the market at Christmas or if we want to like hold it a couple months to get a better price. We'll see kind of what the yeah, market's doing. You never then. know until that, that moment, right? Like you exactly. just have to see what's happening. Yes. Well, I'm excited. Thanks for yes. hanging out and thanks for sharing yeah. your story and your journey with us. Yes. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad we well, thanks for out. making it possible. Absolutely. I love it. I love, I love this space and I love the women that keep being attracted to it. It's been mm-hmm. so special. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Debbie. Well, thank you for everything. Thank you. Thanks for letting me be part of your journey. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. What a fantastic conversation. Thank you again, Rebecca, for hanging out with me and for sharing your story because it will absolutely inspire other women to get off the sideline and do this thing. If you've stayed on the sideline because you think you have to have all this extra free time, Rebecca just proved you wrong. (laughs) If you are still on the sideline because you think you have to flip locally where you live, Rebecca just proved you wrong. If you are on the sideline because you feel like you have to figure all of this out on your own and do this by yourself, then I've got awesome news because you don't. All right. And it's way more fun to flip houses with friends, right? With a community of women supporting you and guiding you and advising you and coaching you than it is without. All right. So If you want to see if we're a good fit to work together, if our coaching program can help get you through your first flip in a way that makes you want to go do a second one, then go to herfirstflip.com and you can see if we're a fit. All right. Okay. Until next time, go out there, flip houses like a girl, leave people in places better than you find them and make it a great time.